we go. Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode. This is episode three. As you can tell, we've got an extra person with us today. It's the funny Suash. Do you want to introduce yourself, mate? Yeah, hi guys. I'm Suash. I'm, I'm here to talk about the England sport for the Euros. And yeah, I think I think let's just dive into it. Who have we got? You just say a bit about yourself. What, what do you want? What do you want to tell me about myself? There's, there's nothing. I, I'm nothing. Just, I know. I mean, <laughs> what do you want me to say? I've, I've never really introduced myself. This is the first time I'm doing a podcast, mate. I'll introduce you anyway. Uh, he goes to university with us, and he's on the master's course at, with uh, a Staffordshire for sports journalism. So. Is, that, is that all? Oh, yeah, you've got nothing else to say, so what's going on with it? That's <laughs> <laughs> an awkward start. <laughs> But anyway, let's yeah, just quite quite awkward, yeah. Let's go and talk <laughs> about uh, football. Right, so so what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about like the final twenty three man squad because England are playing this week, but we're getting closer to the Euros, which means there's only twenty three places up for grabs. So, uh, do you want to start off with goalkeepers? So, who who you who got your edgy three goalkeepers, Joe? Three goalkeepers, straight choice. Uh, Nick Pope because he'd definitely be my number one. Um, he's had a better season than Pickford. Um, I would take Pickford, but I wouldn't play him as much. Um, my third choice would certainly be Sam Johnston, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, he's been certainly been one of the best players in a pretty average squad with West Brom. Um, so, I mean, the thing is, with a third choice goalkeeper, it's very rare that they even play. So, uh, but yeah, no that's him. No I don't know. I just think Henderson, Henderson's done okay, but he just made too many mistakes for me so far. Like he's, I don't know. He's one. Hen, yeah, Henderson's not a bad keeper. So but I wouldn't you, take him. You're a United fan, so how has Henderson been this season? And would he make us? Yeah, good? yeah. You know, it's it, it's not surprising really. I'm gonna pick Dean Henderson as my number one for the Euros for England. And I mean, I would I would have picked Jordan Pickford, but. Like Joe said, I think Pickford's probably made more errors that are, you know, it, it's just quite weird the way he plays because with Pickford and goal, it's all too flashy. And I don't like the back line being into the limelight too often. With Pickford, it's just, he makes he makes these flashy saves. And yeah, I don't, I like a goalkeeper who transmits confidence in the back line, which I think Henderson has done pretty well so far. You can see the difference in Sheffield United as well this season with the goalkeeper. That situation, that's been quite awkward for them. And in, in the past few weeks at Man United as well, with Henderson coming in in place of De Gea, I think we've looked quite better. He, he's quite local. He's good with his positioning. I think he's made a couple of errors, but I think I would pass that off as probably him learning on the job more than anything. So I think, I think he would make a really nice first choice keeper if not for the Euros then definitely for the World Cup in the next two years Yeah, I mean, and, <laughs> and my other two keepers would probably be yeah Pitford and Nick Pope in yes. that order I would pro- I say I'd go for P- Pickford as more than one to walk I'm really going for someone a bit different so the thing is about Pickford I think Southgate picks him and he, he's not put football for England yet I know for club football he's a bit dodgy should we say but I think he is injured at the moment, but he kind of came to form before uh, the international break, but obviously got injured. I think on form, yeah, I'd pick Pickford just because I still think he's the most experienced goalkeeper there. He's been at U at World Cup before, and plus he can take penalties if you need him to. Whereas with, with Pope, I think you'd, I don't, uh, with the way that England play, we'd, we need keepers that can kick a ball. I, I, I know Henderson's a worried fee, but with Pope, he plays with Burnley. They're just going to hoot the ball at the pitch every time. So I'm looking at your short game. Your short game what can you do with the ball, your distribution? That's kind of why I prefer Pickford. And I think, obviously, if he continues to make mistakes for, for football, then that's probably his position on in doubt. But I just feel as if he needs to find form before the Euros. Otherwise, there might be someone else like a Henderson or a Pope who could easily take that in one shirt. So by no means has he got it, but I think at the moment, I think there's that faith in him from uh, Southgate. And I, just, I just see him opting with kind of the experienced goalkeeper. It's like Maguire and Stones have played together at the World Cup and I, I think he'll kind of go along that route almost. Yeah, well, you mentioned with centre-backs there. I mean, John Stones has been probably the best 
English centre back this season. Um, yeah, he's. I think you know the faith that Guardiola's put in him has been fantastic, and it's good to see. I mean, it's good to see Stones get back into form. You know, I think with the arrival of Diaz and the arrival and having Laporte there, you know, I think he certainly hooked his game. Um, but again, England are short of centre half. I mean. I mean, Joe Gomez will he be fit for the would he be fit for the Euros? No, I've heard I've heard best choice really. is Eric Dyer. I'd say and I don't think that's exactly yeah. the best option. <laughs> Eric Dyer, you see, Eric Dyer. I oh, mean, at the last at the last major tournament, Eric Dyer. I mean, yes, all right, he scored the, the penalty to win. Yeah, I, I don't think he was that good either. He was bang average, and yeah, again, he, yeah, he's he's been okay for Spurs this season, but again, it, you know, Spurs have not been. Fantastic, I'd say, yeah. but again, you know, England are short of centre halves. I, I can't think off the top of my head that who had, you know, apart from Stones and probably the obvious choice would be Maguire. But I don't know. It, it, you, you, you try and think. I mean, who else? Who else is really out? This is this is my, this is my back line. I've, I've gone for two right backs: Walker, Alexander Arnold, centre backs: Dyer, Maguire. Ming Stones, then I've got left backs, Chiral and Shaw. How about you, Sirash? Have you got your defence? Right. So I mean, talking about centre backs particularly, I think I think I've got a quite different take on this. So with with somebody like John Stones, I think he's been good, but it's not because it's not just because of him or because of his individual improvement. I think it's the team that he plays in. So if you put Harry Maguire in, in that Man City team, I think people are talking about Harry Maguire being the best centre-back in the league as well. <laughs> so it's, it's, quite, it's quite different oh. with centre-backs because you've got most, most of these performances that you see from centre-backs, they're, they're put in a system where they have to perform to the ability of the, of the standards of the entire system. So if, if you put Maguire in that Man City team, I think, I think definitely, if not the best, because that's obviously the page for because mm-hmm. Van Dijk and Diaz have proven to be slightly better, definitely better than Maguire. But but then the thing with Stones, because I think the way England play, Stones has definitely got to start. Maguire is going to start because I don't see anybody else. So down and get a bit Maguire. Off. I think Pete, I think he's been really good in the last few games. I'm sure obviously you've seen him. I think he was man of the match. Was he? Yeah. Not in, who was it? Yeah, in he West Ham. In Milan. Yeah. Yeah, Milan, even, yeah. even in Milan, he was the man of the match. And so, him, Lindolf, you know, he's not English. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like Joe said, I think England do lack a few centre backs in terms of people who can play on the ball and have got the pace. But, that, that's yeah, walk, that's why I've got walking in because I think if yeah. we have a good, if we revert to that five of the back system, goodness help us, it's so boring yeah. to watch. Uh, Walker, yeah. Walker will probably get right back because I'll take was in the last was it the World Cup yeah it was 2018 yeah he played, yeah, he played centre half um, well I mean do you know what And I'll go on the limb I wouldn't take Trent to the Euros what really I mean I'll, I just, I'll see what do you know he's not had a good season There's not, I yeah. think he's he's, he's lacked um, yeah he's, he's lacked uh, for me the ambition of what's what he's done over the last couple of seasons. Um, if it was me, I think Luke Shaw's had a good season. I, I certainly would take him, and I certainly would start him. Um, but again, it's it, can you rely on Luke Shaw? Yeah, we he have been a bit injury prone over the last few seasons, so I would take Chilwell's my number two. Um, in terms of right back, I'd start Reese James. That's um, a good share. I, think, I didn't put him. I think you know certainly under Tuchel, he's been brilliant. Certainly, certainly playing as that wing back role. So as Chelsea since he like play three back at the minute, certainly he's playing as a as a right wing back. I think he's been class. Um, so he can play there. What I can see why you wanted to take Walker, but yeah, me, I'd probably yeah, I would probably say he would be probably my number two choice. He's their number one right back at the moment. I think. I mean, I still think I don't know. Trippier keeps making the score. I, I, I know it's a safe bet, but I think there's so many better right backs than Trippier. Yeah, I mean, go on. I mean, I was just. Um, uh, jotting down a few uh, few notes. Then you've got Mings, you've got Cody as your centre halves. Would you take Would you take them in your twenty three man squad? I will take Mings, but I wouldn't take Cody. But the thing is, I think Cody's playing tonight, so Mings is going to have to fight for that place. 
I mean, I think that the play apparently is still in Calvert Lewin tonight, so as well. So, well, well it's only San Marino, so it's nothing much of a test. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, yeah, no offense, no offense to San Marino, they could be, you know, the I Stokes and the 21s could beat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's been proven in the past as well. England, I think, in the past. Two to three years, every time I've seen England play against San Marino, I just feel like they could score 10 every game. It, it's that simple, really. It's been like that for the past few years. But yeah, speaking about defenders, I'd, my my preferred choice, I've got I've gone with eight defenders. I've got Trent, I've got Reese James, I've got John Stones, Harry Maguire, Minks, Luke Shaw, Chilwell. And the, the eighth choice, I'm going to say Walker. I, I really want to say somebody else, but I know it's not going to happen. I know this player is not going to get picked, but I would definitely have gone for Van Bissaka. Just, just as someone uh, the podcast who shot is over, the right out. Podcast is over. No, no I'm done. No, no, no. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't really like to play myself, but you cannot deny he does have a few things going for him. So if you want to be if you want to be all out defense, if you want to play against somebody where you just have to sit back and counter, or if you want to like shut down the right wing, he can't cross the ball. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know he can't. I know he can't. But that's the thing. You don't you don't ask him to cross the ball because in in the games that Man United have played well so far, especially in the bigger games against teams that dominate the ball, and when he's a good day to defender. Back, yeah, exactly. He's, he's good one on one. So if you play against somebody who's got who's got a really nice left winger and you have to shut him down. So basically, let's say obviously Grealish is going to be in the same team, but if you have to play against somebody like Grealish or someone that that's going to play on that side, I think I think Aaron Randersack is your man to just shut out that side completely and just nullify that threat. I know it's not going to happen, and it's not the right way to probably. Think about it, but I would have probably picked him as as a man yeah, for this one-off tournament. Yeah, fair enough. Like, I just like think... that's the thing. You can't, you can't, you can't win the league, or you can't win like yeah, the league with somebody like Van Bissaka playing thirty-eight games. But if you're playing a knockout tournament and you're playing one-off games, I think he's as good as anybody defensively that England have got. You're saying he won't win the league with Van Bissaka in defence. Yeah, I don't think you can. Not not as a first team starter, at least. Really, he's worth he's, 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 he's fifty million now. I thought he was your fully back for years to come. No, no. I mean, I don't know. So the thing it's quite weird because the team that he plays in right now, we haven't got we haven't got a right winger at United. So that that obviously makes him look even even worse than he actually is because he's. Obviously, he's not the greatest going forward. He cannot cross the ball. We all know that. But oh, the thing is, he's a good, he's a good one-on-one defender. Um, yeah, there, there's there's facets to this game that he obviously needs to work on. But granted, he's still what 23. He's he's got time ahead of him. But like I said, for a one-off tournament, I would definitely consider taking him. Yeah, but has he got the international experience? Can he acclimatise himself to the England squad like immediately if he's picked up? Yeah, that's that's something that that's what that's I think. Seen. Uh, what what's everyone start on the fence then, including goalkeeper? Yeah, you want to go first? So yeah, I, I mean, I mean that's the thing. So that's why when I started speaking about this, I began with, I know it's not going to happen. I know it's very <laughs> unlikely. He's not played before, so it's it's quite it's quite unlikely that it happens. But yeah, I'd like to believe that you have somebody in the team who probably isn't the best with the ball at his feet and. You know, he's not the most glamorous pick, but he can do a job for the team when when it's needed. Every team has one of that all all the time. You look just, at all the squads that win leagues, win championships, you've got players who do those kind of things in one-off games. Right, well, what's your starting back foot five then? Mine. Back uh, so. so mine would be Pope and goal. Back four would be Reese James. Harry Maguire, John Stones, and Luke Shaw for me. 
Pretty solid. I think I'd pick three of them, except I'd put Pickford in goal, as I've explained. I think he's more of an experienced international option. Then I'd put Walker in again. I'm, I just think this is kind of what Southgate will opt for. I think I know you you prefer. I mean, you wouldn't even put Alexander Arnold in the squad, but I'd have him as a spare boy right back. But if he proves his form, I'd probably put twenty in. But as it stands, Walker's kind of like I don't think he's the standard player in the Manchester City team. But he, he does a job, doesn't he? And he's kind of like used to winning trophies. He can kind of limit himself to making very few errors. I don't think it's the kind of enterprising fullback where he's bombing forward all the time, but I think he'll, yeah, it'll be a short option there. How about yourself, Zubash? I would start, I'd probably start Pickford and goal. I'd get Trent, Stones, Maguire, and Luke Shaw at the back four. Mm-hmm. Is Luke Shaw it, it, your, it, your player of the season? Yeah. So what? Is Luke Shaw play the season? Man, you know what it does. It's Bruno driven. It's it's probably still Bruno just because when when we weren't doing so well, he literally dug us out of the hole every single time, Bruno. Um you can see with him on the pitch, it's it's all when Juan Fernandez is on the pitch, all of our attackers, Rashford, Martial, Green, but they're all off the bike. If if Fernandez is not in, no, yeah, he's going to make a move. Yeah, do, do I like? I so, think if it's like having Piera instead of Fernandez. That team looks not so good. But you put Fernandez, automatically it looks yeah. like a good team. Yeah, he's gone missing. He's gone I missing mean, too many games. Oh, Fernandez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely has. But that's that's the thing with Fernandez. He's not. He's not the kind of player. He's not like the Bruyne who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck. He is essentially an attacker. He's going to find spaces behind the midfield. He's going to want to be in positions where he can hit the opposition. But unfortunately for Man United, we do not have the midfield that's going to find him in those spaces. We just lack the two midfielders who can carry the ball forward, who are good at positioning, who are good at ball progression. And essentially, like I say all the time, that comes down to the manager. There is no tactical structure to this team in possession. No, we're not going. Into, we're not going to go to your Ollie. Yeah, Ollie. yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, not, yeah he's, exactly. not, he's not an Ollie fan. Let's just put it like that. I was going to say, Man United yeah. will not win the league with Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. And that will be. He's, but, he's he's too naive for me. That's why. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. I've been saying that all the time. But yeah, Luke Shaw's been pretty good. Yeah, I think I think I'll just edge Fernandez for the Player of the Year. But apart from that, I think Luke Shaw's. Uh, been absolutely important for Man United. Mid, let's go to yeah. uh, midfielders now. Uh, I'll start this time. I've got Mount. It's very attacking, to be honest. I mean, we're not including wingers. We're just including central midfielders. Yeah, so I've okay. gone Royce, Mount, Madison, Henderson, and Kelvin Phillips. So I've got like five. And Dyer, because he can come forward. So i at six. How about you, guys? Well... For me personally, um, I feel about Declan Rice actually. Um, so, see, Madison at the minute, if he's fit, I would take him. But I know he's got to have surgery at the minute with what after he got injured against Slavia Prague, so that probably rules him out a little bit. Again, if Barnes is fit, I would take him. Um, but I would, I'd take Phil Foden. That's it. That's an absolute must. I think he's been one I mean, of the standout could- players. I'm including him in the front areas, but would you play him as a central midfielder? Then? I would play him as a ten. I think yeah. you know he's been br- he's been brilliant at playing as a as a winger. Don't get me wrong, Guardiola's got the best stab in playing as a, as a as a left winger, but certainly I'd play him as a ten. Um, I would take Calvin Phillips. Um, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take John Henderson. I wouldn't. Uh, Dyer, I, yeah, I, I've sort of more included Dyer in the in the midfield. Um, but like I say, he's more versatile, so he, he can. Um, I have to, yeah, I've said I'll take Mounts. I think Mounts done brilliantly uh, this season, and I would take Grealish. That would uh, not because not because you're in the call, Jamie, but um, I would say, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Gre- yeah, Grealish is um, has done wonders this season for Villa. But I'll, I'll, he just I'll needs speak to, him. <laughs> That's a he, he just he just needs to buy socks. That's all he needs. Is that is that a no on Henderson because he's injured at the moment, and is he definitely going to be out for the Euros? He should, he'll be back. He will be back. He'll be back. But well, whether I would take him, probably. I mean, I know Southgate will, but 
I just think again, the, the Liverpool, some of the Liverpool, the English players for Liverpool this season have just been yeah, I think good of enough for me. Center off, yeah. <laughs> So that's why I wouldn't ta- I wouldn't take him. I, I know I probably pissed off some Liverpool fans, but I'm sorry, but that's you know the the, the English some you know the, the English Liverpool players haven't delivered for me this season. Wait, wait yeah. yourself, sir. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd start with Declan Rice. I'd get Jordan Henderson. Um, I only take Henderson because England absolutely do not have midfielders who are good enough to start. Apart from I'd say Rice, Henderson, and Mount in the middle of the park. I yeah, do that, not that, see anyone else. That would be he's most, ready right now. That's my starting yeah. three, to be fair. Yeah, that's that's my. I mean, that's not the one that I like the most, but I think that's the one that Southgate would pick, and even I would pick if I were if I were asked to start three people in the midfield. But yeah, so I've got those three. I've got Jude Bellingham in. I've been following him at Dortmund this season, and he's had a that's a controversial so pick. He's, wow. he's had a smashing season so far. I've I've been noticing him, and he's the best part about him is he's he's quite tall. He's not he's not the strongest, but he's got a good physique on him. You want to take dribble, off the sheet, man? He's he taking can... Bellingham. Well, I don't care. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> no, no way. I'm, I'm not taking off his cheek. No. I've had, yeah, it's the same. It's the same type of player. He's, he's too young. And I'm not saying that because he's an ex blue nose. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He's not lost his cheek. Is more of an attacker, whereas Bellingham is. He's going to be molded into the role that somebody like Musa Dembele played for Tottenham. He, he's that kind of player in the engine room. He can drop the shoulder. He's got um, good. He's got a good handle of the ball. He I haven't seen him enough. Well, fair enough. I'll yeah, take your opinion not, for it. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, that's the thing. We've not. We've probably not seen him enough. But from what I've seen so far this season at Dortmund. He started the majority of the games in midfield, along with Witzel, and he's been class. He's been really, he's been really good so far. And obviously, like, like the entire Dortmund team, he's obviously not been at his absolute best all the time. But for a young kid who's just moved country, I think he's been absolutely wonderful for them. And yes, yeah, so, so I'd take him to that four. I would take Phil Foden definitely. And yeah, I would, I'd probably take James Ward Prowse on That's current good, yeah. form. Ooh. Yeah. I would probably take James Ward Prowse. He's had a, he's had a good season. season. Yeah, he, he's good on set pieces as well. So he's, I, really, me... I really like I really like Calvin Phillips. I do like him quite a lot. But yeah, I just think with with Rice and Henderson, I think there's enough cover to to have two holding mid. Hold, not not exactly holding. So Rice is definitely holding the field, but Henderson can fill in if needed. So yeah, these these are the six that I would take. So I would I would and take. I would feel press, so but... bad if I couldn't find. I, I feel so bad if I couldn't find a place for Phil Foden in the starting eleven. But it's just too difficult with with the options we've got. I would agree. Yeah, with that. Those are I my think. Six. I would agree. I think I, I do get your point. I mean, there's so many attacking midfielders that we have in the England setup, which is yeah. great. Don't get me wrong. Like I say, yeah. I, I do agree with you that uh, we are lacking that holding midfielder role. So, but yeah, yeah. Con- no controversial pick with you, Bellingham. Again, I, I, I have, I, yeah, I've seen little bits of him, but not enough to really comment on. Oh, he's fantastic. So I, I'd be lying, but um, no, yeah. I, I see where you're coming from with that. I mean, that's the thing. He probably might not start all game this Euros. And like a few other players in the England squad, because they're all so young, I think by by the time the next World Cup comes around, I think we'll see at least one out of Bellingham, Foden, and I think Sancho might start now as well, but Sancho, one out of the three start majority of the games for England. Definitely. I just want to say Henderson. I think I know Joe's left him out, but I still think over the last few years he's been one of England's yeah. most underrated players because he was the England player of the year last year for right, like, for twenty twenty. Even though there's a few games, but at the end of the day, he's still a player that has that international experience, which is always a big thing for me. I don't think you want to change the squad I mean, completely from the last few years. But I still, you want fresh talent, don't you? But you want to keep all that experience like kind of player there. 
you know, it might not be yeah. glamorous as or Luke look for player, but it'll go in the middle of the park. Yeah. He's won the Premier League, he's won the Champions League, he's very vocal. He'll go in there and he'll do a decent job because you'd expect him to. I don't think he'll put too many yeah. feet wrong. I don't think you can win the Euros by playing ex- expansive, exciting football. Name me one team that's won the World Cup or the Euros that plays amazing football. Every team's got to be able to kind of have that part that can kind of do yeah. a shift and like grind, help going their games because yeah. I think that's the way that it works. Especially with international football, yeah. you, players get tired and sometimes uh, that fatigue can kind of and I'll lead to mistakes, and those who have been there before can help kind of like, yeah, see games out or in critical game moments where maybe you want to look protect leads. Maybe that's where Dyer comes in, as boring, as poor as he may be on the wall you now, good option off the bench. Yeah, no, I get your point. I think, like I say, I mean, I'd, the only team I'd probably argue about that comment would probably be Spain um, yeah. when they won the Euros. And but then again, they won the Euros in 2012 when uh, they, they played with, a rec- with our recognised striker. Because they were playing, I believe at the times they were playing David Silva up front. Now, um, no, I mean, David Silva's world class, but um, the likes of uh, Portugal, when they when they won it, they won it with a player that couldn't score for Swansea in 14 months. So, it, you know, it's one of those. I mean, again, that, that 2016 Euros, that should have been France's, France to win, and they didn't. Yeah. So... Um, now I get your point. Um, you know, certainly. Look, all the midfielders are never. It's never a glamorous role. I mean, I can't name one sort of holding midfielder that can play. You know, pretty football. They're, they're very much industrious. You know, it's an industrious area. So, um, no, I get. Yeah, I get. I get you guys' point with with midfielders. Uh, with what with them. so, what would you? What would you guys play? Would you play a free midfield? How would you? How would you? Uh, shape oh, I think. I think I'll end up playing like I could see him playing five, but I'd go for three. I just think I think uh Sebastian so referred to it, have, you'd have on four Mayo, Henderson yeah. and Royce. Because Royce and uh Henderson have played together for quite a while. They've kind of been moulded into that setup. Southway has his preferred system. There's no doubt if they're both fit they'll be in it. And then I think Mount's been one of those players that all right, he's not as Great going forward is perhaps a foul for but I think his contribution defensively on the attack, his work rate, his ability to be able to kind of hold his position, I think he's just going to be more of a short option as of at this moment. So that's why I think he can kind of pick that three. But again, you could put a Madison in there, you could put a Fold in there. I think you can make a case for a lot of players. I probably wouldn't put Foden in the number 10 role because I don't think he's played there enough international football-wise as well. And even for Man City, he's mostly played on the wings or as a false nine. I don't think Guardiola likes to play him in, in centre midfield. The only time he's played in centre midfield was probably two years back and it was a league game against... I think, I think it was West Ham, I think. And they won the game, but... I think Foden was taken off around the 55th minute or something. So, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put Foden in the midfield in the middle three. I could I could end the start seeing him in in a front three, be it with a back four or a back five. He could definitely play as as a winger or as an inverted as an inverted winger. I could see both of those happening. I don't well, see Foden playing. What's in your feet? Are you still sticking your three then, Sebastian? Yeah, yeah. yeah what about you, Joe? So my three would be so my three would be Phillips, Dyer, and I'll still stick with Foden as a ten. Yeah, he could he could play there. He definitely could play there, yeah. That's a fair shout. But so are you not are you not picking mounts then? I, I know just, just out there. Yeah, I'd say Dyer oh, playing with uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a that's a controversial pick. That's probably the most controversial one yet. Well, I yeah, yeah, I'll say. I mean, I mean, it's your opinion, obviously. So, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I know, I know, Southgate loves Mount. I know he does, but <laughs> um, well, I mean, again, it's, it's very, very difficult to leave some of these out. You know, Mason Mount, like I said, Mason Mount's had a great season with Chelsea, and he, you know, he, he performed well for England. So, but yeah, it's it's very difficult to to leave some of these players out because some of them have had. Had good seasons, so but yeah, certainly I I, I do get your point with with Foden playing as a winger, but I think 
I think with the players that we've got as wingers, I think it, it would be even tough for, for Foden to play out there because we've got so many sort of, yeah. I'll call it out and out wingers. Out and like, out, yeah. Yeah. I think that so, brings us on to obviously yeah. mix, which is, I think, the hardest one because there's so much talent there. It's attackers. Like, I think it's not, it's hard to even choose who's going. So I've got Foden, Sancho, Sterling, Saka, Colbert Lewin, Rashford, and Kane, and Grealish. Which is obviously, and I've got Barnes on standby alongside Greenwood. So there's a lot of options in that area. Yeah, but you know, I'll still take over. Yeah, I mean, I've had, um, yeah, most most of the, I mean, most of the picks that you've said there, most of them are all what I've said. Um, Sterling, Kane, Sancho, Calvin Lewin. Uh, see the thing, you know, Barnes, you know, Barnes or Saka, um, Rashford. Um, and yeah, no, I think that's, well, yeah, that's probably what I would go with. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got, I think I've got this game and I've even got the three in mind that I would start with. I would start my front three of Grealish on the left, Harry Kane in the middle. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm not convinced if I'd start Rashford or Sancho, but I think, I think I would just go, I could, yeah, you could start with Sterling as well, but I just feel you need that burst of pace that Rashford's got. Just, He's just so lethal and so fast. I think you need that when you're playing well, with somebody like Kane and Grealish uh, to run beyond, I'm gonna, beyond the strike as well. So, yeah, I'd, probably get, I'd probably get Rashford on the right, yeah. I'll, I'll say, I think uh, when he kind of like played for England for the first few times, I think people finally thought what everyone was saying. Uh, and there's a lot of hype around him for a reason because he's... I mean, I'm gonna. I'd label him a world class player. So I know that some of that might be extreme, but he's that good. He, he carries us because he's injured at the moment. Without us, we look like we're destroyed. Yeah. We don't even look like a team. But yeah. with him in the team, like he just brings, manifests that confidence in all the rest of the players, and he kind of gets the ball. He gets from point A to point B, and he doesn't get tackled. And it's ability. Yeah. It's his ability to be calm, to control the pace of the game, slow it down, speed it up, and still find a pass at the end of it where you can have options because. Without players, you don't. None of them are going to take the ball past many players. That's why Grealish has to do it, yeah. and then they can kind of do what they have to do in the final third. But we, it, it gets to the point where Grealish comes deep, and he gets the ball, and he just carries it. As you've seen against Belgium, he just has that kind of authentic flair that where he can just kind of like glide through challenges, and no one can stop him unless they foul him. And the only team that have stopped yeah. in this season is West Ham because they kind of doubled up and they had two right backs on him. Yeah. So I would I would definitely start him if he gets back fit, obviously. But in that area, we have a lot of players. But I just think really the age that he is, the fact he's our captain, the fact that he's probably the most consistent as well. It, it, I think, look, Rashford's a good player. But is he consistent enough? I don't know. I think he can be missing games, but he can still contribute goals. Whereas Grealish is kind of yeah. consistently in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a fair shout, yeah. Yeah, that's probably the reason why I would start Grealish as well. Like, there's no way I'm leaving Grealish out of this side. Which, I think, and I think Grealish takes Phil Foden's place. Because on current form, they both had unbelievable seasons. But I would still pick Grealish over Foden at this point in time, definitely. And you, you, need, you need that kind of flair player in the team as part of the front three. Because even, even in the past few years, when you look at all of these these, you know, attackers, these wingers, or what you call them. You look at your Eden Hazard, you look at Messi. I'm not, I'm not comparing Grealish to any of them in terms of his output. But the way he carries himself, and, yeah, you just need that somebody to make something happen in the final third. And I think Grealish is that man for England this year. And it's, it's the fact that he gets the ball from deep as well, I think. People yeah, exactly. think he gets the ball. He's the one that he's coming back and he's helping out. Yeah. Uh, so what would, I think as well, uh, yeah, so I'd go for Grealish, Kane. I think he picks himself. I mean, he's yeah. a captain. Uh, I think yeah. he, he should probably move on from Tottenham myself. I think he's incredible. It looks as if he'll get the golden boot again this year. I just think everything you want from a striker. I think Mourinho has actually probably made him a better all-rounded player. Yeah. Now he gets a lot of stick, but Mourinho has definitely improved Kane because he gets he gets assists now. And I just think he's that focal point you need of the team. 
goal scorer right. gets involved in the play. You, you won't then, be there. I, I just fail to understand how Mourinho improves any player. I just cannot. I can't. You don't agree? I, I, I okay. disagree. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not about agreeing or disagreeing. It's just I cannot understand how Mourinho improves players. In what way exactly? No, I, I, want, to make, that. I want to make Kane mainly. I'm not saying he's improved all Tottenham's players because there's, there's a reason why there's I mean, so more. With 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 Harry Kane as well this year, the number of assists that he's got so far, it's not like he's he's getting all these assists in different manner. It's all been the same. It's it's just one player running behind the back line, and he's he's been the person who's provided the pass. That's it. It's it's not it's not that suddenly Kane has become creative. He's had this in his locker all this while. It's just at the beginning of the season, Tottenham somehow found a way to to like get their attack going. And it happened to be Kane playing a bit deeper and Son running beyond him. That's that's probably a change of system more than Mourinho. What do you mean for Mourinho, man? Is it because what he did at Man U? It's, 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 like... not, it's not about that. It's, it's not just about what he did at Man United. It's just in general, I don't, I don't enjoy that kind of management style anymore. It's, I don't know, just... Do you like, takes... do you like any managers? <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, yeah, I do. I mean, to be honest, though, most of these managers that I do like, well, do Nagel, what's his Premier name? League. The Lang the, the Lang one. Oh, Nag- 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 yeah, Nagelsmann. Yeah. I like, I like most of these German managers. You've got Nagelsmann. You've got Marco Rosa, who's gone. He's going to Dortmund next year. He's been at the right back. Yeah, yeah. Hansi Flick. Hansi Flick's been nice. Well, the Southampton manager. Yeah. He's Austrian. Yeah, actually, I like. I like. I like that move as well. Yeah. yeah. With with better players, I think he finishes closer to the top six, definitely. What's, or closer what's to your the team, Joe? Even. Well, front three or whatever. So my front three would be Sterling, because I think you, you can't you can't not you know take out Sterling. Harry Kane, I think his contribution, I think is 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 great. I get. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I would disagree with you with, uh, with Mourinho improving Kane. Um, I just think as as he's gold, I think he's I think he's been a lot more uh, wiser when it comes to it. And Sancho, I think Sancho's had a good season with Dortmund. Uh, of course, he's injured at the minute, but um, although if you if you if you see him do interviews, I don't know how he's got a German accent right now. It's ridiculous. It's it's really really funny. Um, but yeah, Sancho, I think Rashford would probably count himself a little bit unlucky. Um, if if yeah, but um certainly, but I I always felt and but a lot of play, you know a lot of people I've spoken to is that I would have thought better off you know Rashford playing through the middle, but I know he's been playing a lot out wide at United, which you know, I know he's I know he's come out and said yeah I'm, I prefer playing out wide. I get that. I, I understand that. So um certainly. Rashford would be someone I, I I'd bring on to change a game, no, no doubt about it. Because like you say, he's got you know different different breath of fresh air in him. You know he, he's ground the ball, um, but I just think he probably needs. I think he just needs to be a bit more consistent for me. That's why um, if he could be a bit more consistent. He would be a certain starter for England. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair shout. I mean, the only you reason must... I picked Rashford over Sterling is for the reasons that you've just said. I think in in like I've got I've got, a, I've got a quite weird mindset when it comes to international tournaments. So I think of it as one-off matches, and who is more likely to win me a game on his own? And I think Rashford is more likely to do that than Raheem Sterling, because I think Sterling is is better than Rashford right now in terms of beating his man one-on-one on the wing probably or carrying the ball. But if you if you want somebody to like get you a goal or something. I think that would definitely be Rashford over any other winger. Him, him or Sancho? Yeah, him or Sancho. I don't know. It's it's between Rashford and Sancho for me. But Sterling definitely. I can see a case for Sterling starting with. I've got a P on Sancho, but I don't think he's been that good this season or compared to previous seasons. I don't think he was ever worth 120 million, but he's a good player. But I mean, for his age, yeah, you, can, yeah, you cannot justify. These transfer fees. I don't think Maguire's worth 80 no. million as well, but I think no. he's a good player. I don't say he's not a good player, but I don't think he's worth 80 million pounds. Never. 
I thought Sancho did really well last season, but he hasn't kind of kicked on the same way. But he's, um, he's, he's still done. Yeah. He's, still, he's done well in the Champions League. Yeah. I've yeah. watched him in the Champions League. He's done well there. But in his, I've looked at his league stats. I think he's only scored like six goals in the league. I know he usually assists uh, Haaland, which is pretty impressive. But when you've got Haaland up front, it's probably not as difficult because he's always making great ones. Yeah, no, he certainly yeah. did when... start the season bad, but he's been better now. I think I think ever since they sacked the manager, um, Lucien Favre, and they got in the mm. new guy, who was the assistant to Favre, I think they've, they've all improved, and Sancho certainly gotten better after December. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. He's not, he's not oh, been yeah. as good as he was last year, definitely. OK, and we've pretty much picked our teams there, kind of, have we? I think we have, haven't we? Yeah, so yeah, who, much, who, yeah. Oh, I'm, I don't know if we have a plan for this one, but who would be your wild card? So you could have just like one bizarre option, maybe that no one would think of that you could throw in there. Left field, or I'd, I'd probably throw in. You want to throw in? Uh, I'm really for this. Does anyone? I, I've got one. Yeah, if I, I was to bring, him, if I could bring him out of retirement, Jamie Vardy. Yeah, that's that's the one that I was going to say as well. Yeah. I think he's been it, it brilliant be, this season. It be, yeah. I uh, think I've also have... got Danny Ings, probably, but, but again, he's Better quite form. injury prone. He's quite yeah. injury prone. I don't know about Danny Ings. I'd, I'd honestly call Chris Morgan to the squad. <laughs> I don't even laugh at him. I actually think he's done, done. I think he's done well in Italy. So, who'd you say? Chris Morgan. Oh, okay. I'm I don't think that's bizarre. <laughs> uh, let me justify it. Yeah. I mean, he's, I know it, it, in Italy they're kind of more accustomed to like better defending, so like, any player that's going to go there is going to be a better defender anyway. But surely that improves his game, his, his experience. He's played for England before. I think you're getting the thing that I like my experience players, and so I can't stop laughing. <laughs> I've looked at his stats, and I just think he's, a, he's an all round start of his team. Oh. He's a player that, if he's fit, I don't see. I think he's better than Mings and Cody. So why why can't he be in there? Then you guys are gonna obviously explain why he shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I I'll go first. I'd probably say that. Look, Chris Moore's had a good season with Roma. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, I just think it, 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 some of the players that come out. I mean, with the exception of Sancho, who come, you know don't play in England. I think he's a lot difficult. It's the same in the Championship. You know, you could probably make a make a case for Ivan Tony. I mean, he's had he's got twenty two goals in the championship this season for Brentford. He's he's had a fantastic season, um, and yet you know if he wasn't playing, if you know if he was playing in the Premier League, he'd be certain going to for England. But because he's in the Championship, he he won't get a sniff of it. So you know the the I think there's it's a shame for a lot of players. You know, a lot of English players that don't play in the Premier League. I think. Yeah, with, like I say, probably with the exception of Sancho and Bellingham, um, that would be um, that would be mine. But yeah, I do, I do see, I do see where you're coming from with Chris Smalling, or if you lose Van Gaal, it's it's Mike Smalling. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think um, yeah, I do get your point why you would take Chris Smalling. Yeah, I think that's well. We'll just kind of finally finish because obviously we've got we must kind of have an there. So finally, how he, does everyone? And it's, it's a nightmare to upload anyway. How does everyone think England will get on in the summer? How far will make it? And where will we fall short if we don't win it? I think it's going to be if if and yeah, probably in the midfield. I think because there's a few countries who've got such good midfields who can control the tempo of the game, who can move players around and get behind that midfield three of England, the three or two, whatever Southgate chooses to play. But yeah, I think I think games are going to be decided in the middle of the park like they always are. I think I think England are quite better defensively compared to previous tournaments now. I think I think there's some players that I don't know who feel a bit dodgy even now. So somebody like Kyle Walker, I know he's got experience and he's won titles before, but even against Croatia, I think it was him who, who made that mistake, wasn't he? Mandzukic, who, who jumped on him to get the header and knocked it onto Mandzukic? Was it, per- was was it Perisic? Perisic. Was yeah. it either Perisic or 
Who's the other guy? Was it Rabich? Oh, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Rabich, but yeah. Actually. But yeah, I mean, so I think I think it's going to be important who plays in the midfield and how England approach these games. That's that's my take on it. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. I think um, certainly the World Cup a couple of years, few years back. Um, I think we were lucky to get there. Uh, looking to get to the semi-final um, and then when we came up against someone half decent we um, I just felt we were a bit naive with the approach that like I said I do agree with you see Ash you know, the approach has got to be key for us um, yeah I would say midfield is probably probably maybe the weakest area for us um, but I think if we would I, I don't we won't win it we won't win the Euros but I think we will get to I said a quarterfinals. If we draw I'll someone, that, that if, we can, well, if we draw someone, if we if if the, the draw is kind to us, then semi-finals. But I think quarters will be where we'll fall. Where we'll be? Yeah. The, the one thing about for me is that every tournament we always get hyped up and it, it annoys me because people expect that we just because we're England and whatever we we have it right to be able to win the tournament. But if you look at international teams, it's a bit the transition of how you become that World Cup team it's over a period of years. For me, we have not had the build-up as such to be able to be that team where we can just turn it up. I know it happens on the other occasion where maybe a Portugal turns up and they end up winning. But I still think, if you look at Spain and Germany, they were dominant teams and they worked their way up. Whereas for us, I still think the manager is at fault with his, with his pragmatic style of football. That I don't think it's very inspiring. And with the attacking talent we have, I think people will be picking out why are we playing kind of like this passing football that doesn't lead to anything? Because if you remember the World Cup, we all we, we were successful because Harry Kane's penalties and B, we, we were good for the set pieces. What did we actually do from open play? Uh, I literally can't remember anything we did from open play. And like Joe said, when we up against these better established teams like Belgium, who've lost twice, and Croatia, we just kind of, I think that was more for fatigue, if anything. But yeah, the momentum yeah. couldn't carry us through to the final yeah. because we didn't have that technical quality and that was, yeah, I that's, guess that's going to... Yeah. That's, that's precisely my point as well, because you've got now, I think more than ever, you've got technically proficient players who play, but, but these are players who play in the final third, not in the midfield. You need to get somebody who can control the game from the middle, who knows how to keep the ball, who knows when to pass it forward, who knows where, what direction to play it in, when to play it in. That's, that's quite important, because because when I look at the England midfield, I think they're all industrial, hard workers, grafters, and they might even pick a pass. But it's not about that one final pass I'm talking about. The midfielders need to know how to control the tempo of the game, if you know what I mean, and when, when to speed it up, when to keep it back, when to press, when to just sit back. Mm -hmm. That's, according to me, that's quite important. And I think somebody like like Belgium, they've got a really good player in them, Tielemans. I think he's unbelievable at that. Italy would the same. They got Verassi. I don't. I think England lacks that kind of player who can just who can just have the ball for fun and keep it for fun, and then release it at the right time, because that's the most important. For me, the warning signs are there. We've we've lost the Czech Republic and Belgium. I just think, yeah, in these kind of games where, where we're not there, we just yeah. we're not there. We haven't got the. The players that, even though we do have the players that have been there before, we haven't got the players that have yeah. come through these situations and know how to deal with them. Yeah. So, and I don't think Southgate knows how to make the most of his bench, but this year he's got a great bench. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that can be different somewhat. As so I'm not a big yeah. South, I'm not Southgate's biggest fan. I think, I think he's, I won't say he's like welcomed his stay, but I think I would have liked to have seen a different direction taken. But he just, I think he was a safe bet by the FA, to be honest, wasn't it? If, yeah, and I think he's done a good job as well. But I think I think when it's it comes progress. down to the crux of it, yeah, it's my opinions on Southgate are quite similar to Dolsha. Where I think where I think he's done a good job so far. But I think to win something, you need to go in a different direction. He's laid the foundations now. He's got all the players that you need to win something. You just need somebody with better tactical knowledge and better applications of of all these. Instructions to probably go somewhere with it. I still think even with the squad we've got, I don't. I still think there's better squads. I think we've got one of the better squads. But I just, I just think 
Yeah. Fra- France, even Portugal, like, they've got a ridiculous team at the moment. Compared to 2016, yeah. I, I think I can name like 10 players off the top of my head that are just, it's ridiculous how good they are. And they're still, oh, with Naldo playing, so, so. I just think there yeah. will be better teams. I honestly think Belgium, Portugal, France are the teams that will be better than us. Germany's quite good as well. I don't know. I think he's, he's stepping down, isn't yeah. he? You're low. Yeah. But the, yeah, after the yeah. end of the Euros. I think it's Germany. I mean, they've got a lot of attack as well. I still feel like the centre back, the rich one centre back. It's like, I think they've got Boating, Ginter, Saul. But they're not, they're, it's not like they've got. But what was it? Who was it? It was Hummels and who was the other guy? I shouldn't know. Yeah, Boating, Boating and Hummels. Boating and Hummels are gone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the manager it's said, not yeah, the same the manager's not gonna pick, he's not going to pick yeah. Boating, Hummels, and Thomas Smaller. Yeah, because Mullers has got good. He's retired, hasn't he? Yeah. I think Kroos is still playing. Yeah. That's uh, Kroos, yeah. Uh, I mean, if he was, I think he would play, um, well, you've got Nicholas Sewell, who's decent, decent, decent set up. Yeah. You've got Rudiger um, as well. Rudiger, um, you've got, I mean, it's such a shame because there's, there's such a few, there's low, you know, some of the great talent, you know, Hummels, Boateng, who you just can't rely on them anymore. Marco Rose is another one, can't rely on him anymore. Because well, he's so, is injured at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he's just too injury prone now. Um, yeah, you know, he doesn't. He, he hardly gets a game for Dortmund now. That's that's it's it's, yeah. it's a shame. But for them, it you know, he's got to move on. Maybe you know, I, I don't see him staying at Dortmund too long uh, for, for forever and ever. Yeah. yeah, I think we've kind of gone about time. I would love to go even more. I'm sure we could be talking all day, but I think. For the sake of uploading the sock, we'll cut one ear unless you guys have anything else to add. No, no, I think that's, I think we've covered everything, haven't we, for, for, for tonight? Yeah. Uh, Sash is going to work on his introduction for next week. He's going to explain <laughs> a bit more about himself. Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce myself. That's going to, I'm going to get straight off this and prepare my introduction for next week right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about that. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, thanks for the guys. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, I mean, it wasn't as controversial as what it might be. But, uh, definitely some controversial shouts. Whether it's uh, it was Bellingham, I, I, I mean, I, get, I understand that one. Oh, it's my bizarre one of Chris Smalling, which nobody agreed with. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, what? I, when I, we started I, speaking, I thought I thought one was like I was going to be the most controversial one. You topped it with Chris Smalling. I just cannot. Oh, yeah. it's, it's unfathomable. Chris I'm putting out the, I'm, I'm putting out the title because. It's gonna get the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, so it's uh, for anyone that's watching this. Yeah.